So ZBrush 2020 is out. There's some cool new features. Uh, it does some really neat things. Um, not going to get into that in this video. Here I'm going to demonstrate Ryan's Tools 1.4. That's right, I've updated Ryan's Tools with some cool new features of my own. Also some bug fixes. You might want to check this out. Uh, so what's interesting about ZBrush 2020 is they actually added a feature that uh, seems like it borrowed from a feature of Ryan's Tools. Uh, the ability to paint on the UV layout and then bring that back into your 3D model. Uh, so, and actually they broke my plugin. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but uh, my plugin doesn't work for that feature anymore. So I just removed it, but that's okay. The way it works in ZBrush is actually better because you can actually uh, sculpt in UV layout mode and have that sculpting detail come back to the 3D model as well. So check that out in ZBrush 2020. I've removed that from Ryan's tools but I've also added in some cool new features. Let's take a look at them right now. First, I wanna take a look at a new primitive that I've added called Bounding Box. So we've got a bunch of subtools here making up this character. Now let's say I want to get the size, the, the height, the width, and the depth of this character, um, and I might wanna go down to Geometry. And under the Size subpalette here, we've got uh, X, Y, and Z, and then X, Y, Z size is basically the largest number of these three. Now this will tell us the size of the currently selected subtool, but what if we want to know the size of the entire model and even scale the entire model precisely so that the entire height is a precise number? So getting that scale as it is in ZBrush is kind of cumbersome. You might have to go into uh, one of these transpose things, and if the gizmo is on, you have to turn it off, and then you have to drag out this line, and then who knows how precise that is you're, you're drawing out of it and let's say if we want to get the, the depth front to back you know it's kind of confusing should we drag from this point or from this point or down to the visor to the shoe uh, let's avoid all of this hassle okay so all we need to do is click on bounding box and boom we've got a bounding box subtool now around everything and now the size tells us exactly how big this bounding box is. So now we've got the scale for the entire character. And now if for 3D printing purposes or whatever reason you need to know the scale of the entire character, here it is for you right here. Now the great thing about this is let's say we need the entire character to be 10 inches tall. Okay, right now it's 9.3. So all we do is go into gizmo mode, turn on the uh, switch here that affects all subtools or all visible subtools anyway. And let's just click and drag on this and scale it up. So now you can see in the size on the right hand side, this number is going up. So if we want to make this 10, we scale that up to 10. Now still this is like slightly imprecise. We can't just type a value in here because if we type a value in here, it's only going to scale the bounding box, but this gets us pretty close. And so you can see this bounding box is just added as a new subtool here in our list. Okay, so here's another quick little feature. New tool is very simple and straightforward. Just simply creates a new tool with a sphere and a ground plane. Nothing to it, pretty simple. Okay, now let's take a look at a new section I've made called masking. Now there was already the grow mask, but I had it under random extras, but I added two more masking features here, so I decided to make a new section called masking. So let's see what happens here. If we just paint you know, kind of just a simple mask or whatever. Uh, some places it's blurry and some places it's a little sharper, but let's say we want to increase mask contrast. So all we have to do is click on mask contrast and what it's going to do is it's going to just sort of gradually increase the contrast. Now when it reaches a point you like, you can just simply hit escape and it'll lock that in. Now the cool thing about this is you can also go through your undo history and sort of dial in where you want that mass contrast to be. So it could be somewhere in between or somewhere more contrasty. Okay, now let's take a look at mask clamp. So for this, I'm going to draw another mask that kind of have a gradation from strong to light. And now let's just click and drag on this slider. So the farther to the left I slide this, the more a mask has to be masked in order to be masked. So if I undo this, you can see that stuff that was lightly masked got removed from the mask. Now if I slide it the other direction, then things that are even slightly masked are going to be part of this really sharp mask. 
If I undo this and just do somewhere in the middle, you can see that the effect is uh, taking into account uh, up to parts that are masked 50% and anything less than that will not be part of the final mask. Okay, now let's look at the scale section. So previously I had Dyn brush size and the random extras, but I added a couple more scale features here. So I moved Dyn brush size up into this new section called scale. Um, just as a refresher, Dyn brush size, if you click this, it makes your brush size calibrated to the size of your model, so it's not like crazy big or crazy small. So uh, bake scale, let's take a look at this. So when you bring in a model into ZBrush, sometimes it will fudge the scale of your object in order to make it two units in the longest dimension. So looking over here at the size, you can see uh, ZBrush has made this two units. However, a lot of times when you're working in models, especially if you need to output to 3D printing or something, you need or you may want to work with uh, more like specific, like a more accurate real scale. So let's see why this is doing this. So if we go down to export, we can see that uh, ZBrush has added a scale factor. So let's say this ottoman was in inches. And so obviously this ottoman isn't two inches in the, in the longest dimension. So uh, what we could do is set this back to one and we could go back to geometry and we could try to put in the correct size if we know what it was from a previous file. But instead of doing that, let's just simply click on bake scale. So what this did is it multiplied the size by the export scale factor and just locked in what the actual real world scale should be on this. So if we zoom out here and we go back to geometry and size, you can see now the correct size is locked in about 35 inches wide. Okay, so this function works great on single subtools, but what if you have a model with lots of different subtools to work on. Bake scale only works on the selected subtool. So let's say that we've got this model made up of all these different subtools. And coming down to export, you can see that when we imported it, ZBrush added this scale factor. And let's say we need to make this all real world scale. So instead of going through and doing that one at a time with all these different pieces, which would just be ridiculous. Uh, let's go ahead and use this bake scale visible subtools. Now, unfortunately, this isn't a single click solution. However, it is pretty mindless in the sense that you just click step one and then step two and then step three. Okay, with that all finished, ZBrush has corrected the scale on all of the different subtools. If we come down to export, you can see now the scale is reset to one and all of the objects now have the correct scale baked in. Now this is something I use all the time because I work a lot with 3D printing and so I need to know exactly what the scale is for different objects here in the size. Okay, finally, let's look at the last new feature. I'm just gonna go to a default scene here. And I'm gonna bring in a high res primitive. This is great for making vector displacement maps. And so once this is brought in, I'll just go into solo mode here, and I'm just gonna do something just really fast and, and crappy. Not really gonna to worry too much about what I'm creating. Just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna make a vector displacement map here. Okay, so when you've got a vector displacement map that you like, you want to uh, snap your view so you're looking directly at it, and then simply click on Make VDM Brush. Okay, so now we've got a vector displacement map brush. Now this is a lot easier than the manual way of going through. Uh, doing this uh, just without this plugin, you have to go up to brush or alpha or it's, uh, some convoluted process. I don't know what it is anymore because I don't have to remember how to do that anymore because this is so much easier. All right, so this is Ryan's Tools 1.4. Download it on Gumroad. There's a link in the description. It is free. Uh, donations are accepted, however, please donate so I can keep working on this. Everybody who has donated, thank you so much. You've really helped out. And if you've been uh, skating by uh, freebie style, that's cool too. But uh, if you can make a donation, please. Thank you very much and have a good one.